Hey everybody, welcome to Tech Tickle Super Sexy Build Vlog 6 Edition. Here today to come at you with yet another build vlog. I'm going to show you a computer I put together using all but one used component. And of course, all of my build vlogs are themed. They're all meant to be educational. I don't just do this to show off my cool shit. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about the R9 290 and how you should treat Hawaii GPUs now that the RX 480 is on the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we start with the part list, I'm going to say a couple things. Number one, I'm going to try my best not to bump the desk and make the camera go all fucking like it was in my last video. And secondly, I'm going to try my best to blow through this part list pretty quickly because it's all standard stuff that is currently reflective of market prices here in Toronto. So there's nothing really all that interesting to talk about. Anyway, start things off with the motherboard. Asus P8 P67-M Micro ATX motherboard for $60 along with an Intel i5 2500K clocked at 4.5 gigahertz on 1.325 volts for 130. That's $190 for a CPU and motherboard combo. That should not bottleneck this R9 290 in the least. RAM, we got four sticks, four gigabytes each of Mushkin Silverline DDR3 1333. Yes, it's a little slow, but I'm sure it's perfectly capable of some overclocking. Paid a grand total of what looks to be $49 for this kit of four sticks. The reason I put them together like this is because they're all the same. They look beautiful. I love the Silverline series. Low profile, shiny, and nice. SanDisk SSD plus 240 gigabyte SSD is the primary boot drive. Again, $45. It's one of the ones I pulled out of my stash. Speaking of the R9 290 included in this build, it is the Sapphire version. It is the not custom PCB, so it's reference. At the very least, it'll be cooled better and it'll be quieter. That's the key. Not a lot of overclockability as I've currently played with and found out, but it'll do the job. And for $180, it is, and I will talk about this more later, exactly where I think Hawaii GPUs on the low side of things should be given how the RX 480 has been predicted to perform and again we'll discuss that more in great detail after I show you the benchmarks. Corsair TX750 powering this thing it's a bronze rated Corsair PSU I think it's based on the CWT platform I'm not sure but it's passable their views on it are okay, and it is cheap. Paid 30 bucks for it. And I've got that CPU cooled by a Noctua L12 that I paid $40 for, which is a good deal for a Noctua L12, don't get me wrong, but I actually bought it for personal use. I was gonna put it in my SG-13 that's under my TV, but as it turns out, it occupies just a little too much space for my comfort, and it doesn't allow for sufficient airflow to actually dissipate the heat that the heat sink absorbs. Also, it kind of butted up almost right against the back of my graphics card and it didn't short anything out. Everything was perfectly fine. I even put some thermal insulation between the two just to keep them separate, but I still just did not feel comfortable with it. So I went with a different cooler, the Deep Cool Gabriel, which is a little smaller and actually performs a lot better in this case, in this use scenario, and freed up the Noctua L12. Last but not least, what did I put it all in? Well, I went to Canada Computers and I bought a brand new Bit Phoenix Aegis Core in red. And the reason I did is because one, they're on sale, they're a clearance item. Bit Phoenix, for some reason, is dumping off a lot of their old models. I'm not sure why. Just all of them are heavily discounted and very few of them are left in stock. But I did manage to pick this one up for a total with tax of $80. That is way more than you need to pay. Believe me, you can get a micro ATX case that will house all of this stuff for like 10 or 20 bucks on Kijiji. But again, for me, this is intended to be something that I'm going to have in someone's home. So I wanted it to look nice. So in total, that brings us to 614 Canadian dollars. If you had to add OEM windows to this, it would cost you another 40 buying from somewhere like Kingwin, which by the way, I don't necessarily endorse. I think Kingwin and G2A are actually shit sites, especially for buying games, but for buying operating systems, then it's probably fine. If you had to do that, you'd add 40 bucks to it. Well, we didn't have to because once again, fortunately there was a Windows activation still on this motherboard that is totally legit and good to go. So that knocks 40 bucks off the cost of this. So we currently sit at 614 bucks. Now this is the most expensive system that I've put together to date on this channel. And I'm very interested to see how it performs price performance wise. So we're gonna take a look at that and then I'll be back to talk more about about the brand new Polaris 10 RX 480, how it's priced and how you can expect the rest of the AMD and Nvidia lineups to compare in terms of performance. Okay, let's go over the benchmarks real quick. I think you guys know how an R9 290 is supposed to perform being that it's been out for three years and reviewed to fuck. 
But anyhow, Bioshock Infinite, 102 frames per second average, with the settings maxed out, a full 24 frames per second higher than the next closest competitor. Tomb Raider, 26 frames per second higher than the next closest competitor, for an average of 86. The minimum of 64 was higher than the average of the next closest competitor. And of course, once again, everything was maxed out with the preset set to Ultimate. Thief, of course, which is a bitch of a game to run, was not a problem for this card at all. We had... 92 frames per second on average with a 68 minimum, which once again bested the average frame rate of the next highest competitor. And Mental, of course, was enabled, as I always enable it where possible. Shadow of Mordor, 116 frames per second. This suggests, of course, that I probably could have cranked those settings up and gotten a bit more pretty performance out of this, but for comparison's sake, I left it the same as the rest of the systems that I've tested in the past. Needless to say, a bit overkill for the high preset you could definitely go very high and maybe even turn it up to ultra minus the texture packs given that this is only a 4g card and unigen heaven are synthetic no story to tell there once again absolutely crushed the competition and performed stellar it's not all about performance we know how this system is going to perform the key is trying to figure out whether or not it is worthwhile to put together for the amount of money you have to pay, which is of course considerably more than anything else I've ever built on this channel. And the conclusion is very simple. Yeah, like it's good. It's just over $6 per FPS, but it is nowhere near the best that I've done. Still to this day, the GTX 670 i5 2400 system I built a while back was the best. But of course, with all of these systems, understand that there are variables included that you might not necessarily need to include to get this kind of performance. Some of these have SSDs, some of them don't. And of course, that doesn't really affect performance. Some of them have extra RAM you don't necessarily need for gaming, like this system. So long story short, I'd say this is a pretty good deal considering most of the components are newer, in particular the graphics card, and will likely give you a longer life than some of the other systems I've thrown together. So I would give this a definite thumbs up. This is definitely the kind of system that I would build for myself if I were putting together something. The system, of course, has a great degree of future compatibility. You could probably put some stronger graphics cards in there and still get some pretty good performance out of them. All in all, I think it's a good, solid, all-round build, especially for the price that I paid. Anyway, to talk a little bit more about the new AMD releases coming out and how it relates to this card and this particular build, we're gonna go back to Desk Jeff. All right, folks, so there you have it. That's another build in the books. A really nice performer. I would certainly recommend putting together something similar. It's a good bang for buck and has a lot of viability going forward into the future. With regards to the R9 290 and the RX 480. Now, I didn't put out a separate video on the RX 480 because frankly, we don't have a lot to go on yet. But what I will say is this, based on what we've seen from Nvidia, based on what we know from AMD and their press releases, based on the number of stream processors that are in this thing, the size of the die, the expected gains in IPC, power consumption. We know, roughly speaking, that this is gonna land somewhere between the R9 290 featured in this video and at the high end around the R9 390X GTX 980 area. Where in between it falls, we don't know. I hope it's on the high end because that does wonders for me and buying used cards. It makes GTX 980s look considerably less valuable by comparison, which is very good for people like me. Long story short, once again, just like I said in the 1080 and 1070 video I did a while back, price your offers accordingly if you are a buyer. If you wanna buy an R9 290, $180 Canadian is a very good price. The RX 480 here in Canada should retail for about 270 ish dollars after taxes if you're lucky, maybe 280. So buying a $180 card that performs the same but has higher power consumption, less warranty time, and is a little dustier, pretty good deal. Anyway, I think we're gonna call that one a video. I am presently in the process of moving, which is why my shelf is gone and a lot of my shit's clearing out. We are packing. We just bought a house, so congratulate me, you piece of shit. And I will see you in the new studio. The entire basement is gonna be dedicated to tech shit, and it's gonna be so goddamn cool. I'm gonna be a real YouTuber, it's gonna be great. And then, then I'm gonna have lots of subscribers, maybe, and find a way to promote myself and get my, get, get, yeah, yeah.